Hi there everyone, I'm meteorologist Rochelle Peart with your afternoon evening update on August 21st, tracking Hurricane Henri in the Atlantic. So tropical headlines, Henri officially the third Atlantic hurricane for the 2021 season. We do have a high risk of rip currents along the eastern coast of the United States, even areas that are not going to be affected by Henri dealing with this high risk of dangerous rip currents. Uh, and also storm surge between one to five feet is possible for parts of New York and also New England. I believe it also does include a very small portion of New Jersey as well. So looking at the tropics as a whole right now, as of recording, we do have the remnants of grace over Mexico. Of course, of course, excuse me, Hurricane Henri, and then also a tropical wave, which right now has a low chance for tropical development. And we'll talk about that toward the end of this video. Of course, the main focus is going to be on Hurricane Henri. That 5 p.m. advisory on Saturday, the 21st of August, 240 miles east east northeast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and that's on the Outer Banks. That's kind of that little uh, bend here on the Outer Banks. That's where Hatteras is located. Sustained wind 75 miles an hour, but expecting Henri to strengthen as it moves northward. It's moving northward at a pretty good clip, 18 miles an hour and down to 991 millibars. Now, infrared satellite right now showing that storm moving off to the north, and I mentioned even areas not impacted directly by Henri, no tropical watches or warnings in place. All of these areas dealing with high rip currents during the day Saturday and probably also dealing with some of those areas with high or moderate risk for rip currents on Sunday as well as Henri moves to the north. We did see some of those dark, uh, the black colors and also some of those white colors indicating the thunderstorm activity on the infrared satellite, which does show you the tops of the cloud tops, the blacks and the whites indicating higher cloud tops more thunderstorm development, more of that thunderstorm activity. Water vapor imagery here, of course, here's Henri, and you can see kind of that counterclockwise swirl. Of course, we do know that, uh, or maybe you don't know, but hurricanes are an area of low pressure. And with low pressure in the northern hemisphere, they spin counterclockwise, and you can see that little bit of spin with Henri, even on the water vapor imagery, as again, it continues to push off to the north. Not a lot of dry air, so Henri has a good amount of moist air to feed on dry air, hurricanes, tropical storms. They they don't mix very well. Something else that doesn't mix very well with tropical systems is the wind shear. Here's what I've done for you. I've put on areas of wind shear that are unfavorable for tropical systems and wind shear is the difference uh, in wind speed or wind direction as you go from the surface up higher up into the atmosphere and you do see a good amount of that unfavorable wind shear as you look from areas of Hampton Roads, Virginia through the Del Marva up through central Pennsylvania through Maryland and even into parts of New Jersey as well. So we're actually expecting Henri to kind of hook a little bit and move a little bit more northwestward. So it could possibly pick up on some of this unfavorable wind shear and that could impact some of the potential strengthening that Henri will see over the next day or so before making landfall. Current sea surface temperatures as as of Saturday evening, you do see 80 degrees. We also have this deep area of that burgundy that's along the Gulf, and we're continuing to watch uh, some of those warmer waters for the potential uh, of Henri feeding on those warmer waters and then strengthening a bit as it moves to the north. But as it moves north, you do see that those wind, excuse me, the sea surface temperatures get a little bit more on the cooler side. We're seeing less of the reds and burgundies, more oranges and even some yellows. You do see right around here into southern Connecticut, some of those yellow colors. So we're seeing some of those cooler sea surface temperatures, which will also impact the potential strengthening and then could also help with weakening of Henri before making landfall. Let's take a look now at the tropical alerts. We do have hurricane watches and excuse me, hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings in place. The entire state of Connecticut, pretty much the entire state of Rhode Island, and then all the way down New York and even into parts of New Jersey, as you can see right here, under some sort of warning, either for a tropical storm 
or for a hurricane. This pink color here that you're seeing for a good portion of Long Island into parts of southern Connecticut, southern Rhode Island, doesn't look like any part of Massachusetts this is under a hurricane warning. Maybe a small portion of extreme southern uh, Massachusetts under that. But uh, tropical storm warning currently in place for Cape Cod all the way from areas like East Falmouth up through Hyannis, through uh, Provincetown, also Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, all under a tropical storm warning because of Henri. So let's talk a little bit more about this storm. If Henri were to make landfall in Long, excuse me, on Long Island as a hurricane, it will be the first time that's happened in nearly 40 years because Hurricane Gloria back in 1985, that was the last time Long Island saw a landfalling hurricane and Gloria when it made landfall was a category two storm. Now something else, if Henri were to make landfall in New England as a hurricane, which right now doesn't look like it will be the case because we do have some of that wind shear and also those cooler sea surface temperatures that Henri is gonna move over. If that were to happen, it would be the first time since Hurricane Bob back in 1991, which made landfall as a category two storm August 19th of that year in Rhode Island. And Bob actually made two landfalls in Rhode Island, uh, one pretty close to the other, first in Block Island and then in Newport, Rhode Island. And Bob was actually the only landfalling hurricane in the continuous United States for 1991. So just a little bit of a factoid there. Tropical alerts, switching it over to storm surge alerts. You do see a storm surge watch for parts of uh, parts of Long Island, but pretty much from uh, eastern New York through the Connecticut coastline, the Rhode Island coastline, southern parts of Massachusetts, again, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and the entire area of Cape Cod under a storm surge warning. And some of the numbers that we could be seeing, especially from Connecticut through Rhode Island, we could be talking about three to five feet of storm surge. Also for Long Island as well, we could be talking about three to five feet of storm surge. As you head a little bit farther off to the east and then back into New York, we could be looking at some areas of one to three three feet of storm surge still causing issues, just not quite as high as the areas that the center of the storm are going to be moving over areas that are close to the center of the storm. We're expecting, of course, higher impacts. Finally, now getting over to the track of Henri 5 p.m. advisory. We do have the storm about 335 miles away from areas on Long Island and gusts up to 90 miles an hour. Remember, we could see some strengthening by Sunday 2 a.m. forecast 80 miles an hour, but then some weakening again. We have that shear. We also have some of those cooler waters as well. So right now looks like it could make landfall on Long Island, possibly as still that weak category one hurricane or a very, very strong tropical storm. Similar story for parts of Connecticut, really looking like we're honing in on a Connecticut landfall for Henri as we look into the day on Sunday, second half of the day on Sunday. Again, you do see here about 2 p.m. right over Long Island, not gonna take too long. If this storm keeps its speed, if, there is a chance that this storm will also slow down as it heads into New England before taking that hook. Because taking a look at the track here, you're seeing Sunday 2 p.m. this icon, Monday 2 p.m. this icon, of course weaker because it's been over land for 24 hours. But you do see not a lot of movement with the center of that storm. So we are going to be keeping an eye on a slower moving Henri dropping more tropical rainfall. Maybe the winds die down, but we still have the tropical rainfall and we still do have some form of stronger winds kind of centered into this kind of eastern New England area, western New York area. So keeping an eye on those factors as well. So the factors in play for whether or not Henri will strengthen or weaken. We have this cooling sea surface temperatures I've mentioned a couple times already. Land interaction, of course, it's going to move over Long Island, a little bit of land interaction there. And then it, once it moves over New England, we're going to see that weakening as you'd expect with tropical systems. But also we do have generally low wind shear, but if it does take enough, enough of that hook over to the north and west, could interact with some of that unfavorable wind shear. So just a little bit of a flip of a coin there, depending on how far uh, west Henri wants to move. So taking a look here at the probability of 75 mile an hour winds, that's 
bottom tier hurricane strength. You do see it's pretty low as we look towards extreme eastern Long Island. We are into that kind of 50 60 uh, probability there and a little bit lower as you head into uh, eastern parts of Connecticut, western parts of Rhode Island. So we could still have that chance for Henri to stay a hurricane. We'll have to keep an eye on how it interacts with the different factors as it continues its northward movement. Switching it over to the probability of 40 mile an hour winds, which is bottom tier tropical storm force winds, and we're seeing a lot more reds, 80, 90, even 100% chance that we will at least see a tropical storm making uh, making its way up the up the Atlantic. Uh, up the Atlantic waters and then into parts of New England as we head into the day on Sunday. Now, as far as the rainfall goes between now and the middle of the week, uh, as Henri kind of makes that hook and kind of hangs out in parts of New England as we head into early next week, some of the numbers we're talking about three, four, five, maybe even six inches of rain in some of these locations. You're seeing some of that heavy rain, of course, concentrated on Long Island. That's where we're watching for that potential first U.S. landfall for Henri. And then again, as we look towards eastern Connecticut, we could be talking about some of those higher rain totals as well. Now, depending on where the storm the center of the storm moves, if it shifts a little bit farther to the west or the east, some of this heavy rain could be moving along with it because we tend to see some of that more heavier rainfall on the left side of the storm. But of course, you might know that on the right side of the storm, that right front quadrant, that's where we have some of the heaviest rain. I'm also expecting some tornadoes with this system as it moves inland over New England for tomorrow as well. Even if it's a tropical storm versus a hurricane, that risk for tornadoes is there with this storm. Again, on the right front quadrant of that system, that's what we'll be keeping an eye on for the potential, the best potential for some tornadic activity with Henri during the day on Sunday, maybe even overnight Sunday into Monday. So if you are in New England watching this video, make sure you have a way to get tornado severe thunderstorm alerts on your phone just in case that does happen in your area. We'll be keeping an eye on the exact tract of Henri during the day on Sunday. Now taking you back to the open waters of the tropics, we have this tropical wave I mentioned early, early in the video. It only has a 10% chance for developing into at least a tropical depression within the next five days. Here's a look at the list. We are one third of the way through the list of names. We had Grace rapidly intensified to a category three hurricane. So, so far we've had three hurricanes, one major hurricane, which is a category three or above, but we're still in the early stages of that kind of peak season, those peak weeks for uh, the hurricane basin activity in the Atlantic. So we'll keep an eye on things as we go closer to the end of August middle of September, that kind of peak peak season, but we're typically still in that kind of peak season as we head through the month of September as well. But of course, September 10th, September 11th is that peak date that we typically look toward as we move through the hurricane season. If you're interested, you don't have to. You can follow me over on Twitter at underscore Rochelle TV. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this video. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and we'll be updating you with the tropics as we continue to move forward through this 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. I hope you all are having a great weekend and uh, probably see you back here tomorrow.